Raspberry and custard pie for just four dollars. Are you thinking what I'm thinking about the sign? No, I don't think so. I'm just wondering, like, I got a lot of questions about that ad. First of all, I reckon you could get a lot more than four bucks. I think he's undervaluing the, the <laughs> line. Is it his? Well, that's so that's my question. He's walking along, he sees free. So does he stand there for the rest of the time and then just takes cash in hand? I think he's sitting in the so. chair. Sorry? You'd sit in the chair, sit in the chair and chair. then sell the table for four dollars. Right, so do you reckon the lamp is four bucks or he's saying the whole collection is four dollars? I'll wait here, give me four bucks, and then you could take it all, or is he selling it off piece, man? I think everything is four dollars each. That's good. So you get three times four dollars, yeah. The amount of meals that he wants for the four. Correct. I'm just saying these things are worth analyzing. <laughs> ask him. I should ask him. <laughs> McDonald's, I know you're watching. Uh, let me know some info. I want the background of that guy's character. Uh, all right. Game one of Super Week down. A win for Die Wolves. Mm-hmm. A proxy win for Order. Still two more games on the cards for AV. Yep. How did we feel game one went? I mean, 38 minutes proves that you're hard to beat, so that's a positive. But yep. now you need to win instead is the next step for AV. But like, it's a big win for Die Wolves right now. They've given themselves a point of separation on mm-hmm. the standing. So basically locked is what you would say for Dia was at this stage yep. uh, if they continue with the form that they were in, particularly through their bot lane. Yeah, and a kind of strange game, to be honest, because it was a very split map game. Like, Chippies had complete run of top side, Dia Wolves had complete run of bottom side, uh, Katsuri was an absolute monster, right? And the only game that I've seen since Aladoric left the Avant roster where it didn't look like a split map was when Dragku was playing the Crab got, and you guys were just mm-hmm. all running around and grouping together, and that looks like there was some cohesion. Mm-hmm. I think Chen Shuan should have been the answer to fix that problem. Obviously, had a bit of a shocker of his first game, postured very aggressively and got punished very well mm-hmm. by Rays and the Diables. But uh, it's just something to worth note, because the strength of Avan is still definitely there. Shock had a monster game. Chippy's had a pretty like good performance as mm-hmm. well. Like uh, I think like you know Miru's still doing Miru. See, he stole the Baron, but it's just like you can't split the map that hard. You can't have an 11 one eighty carry running around because I think Bryce said it. But hitting turrets with an eighty carry is just such a more simple win condition than having to split push with a top laner. And simplicity wins games in the OPL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, split pushing with a top laner when there's seven teleports in a game as well. Very Those hard. tend to make things very difficult. So it's not the easiest game from draft. And, you know, there was definitely some things that AV can look at that I won't go into detail with because mm. everything I say would be as a coach. Yep. So yeah. they have a lot to work on. Some insight you could give us to AV, though. Uh, how is Chen Chuan fitting in in terms of like a team dynamic in AV? Obviously, it's very late in the split for mm-hmm. someone to be uh, added to the team. How's that? Yeah, going? I mean, the, the hardest part will just be he's just so different, right? Yep. Like, he is very aggressive. Mm-hmm. He will always be aggressive. It's just in his blood, right? Like, he's just going to be that kind of player. And now we've three roll swaps for two weeks. Now we've roll swapped back. Yep. And so, like, we're kind of relearning everything with a new player. Mm-hmm. Yep. I wouldn't, ex- I honestly, I wouldn't expect us to be at our best in this week. Like, I just want AV to make Gauntlet yep. because then we'll be at our best. It's why, in your eyes, you've aged several years just in the last, like, two weeks. But <laughs> I believe, minutes, I'd say. I genuinely believe that you can pull it off. So I'm excited to see if you get into Gauntlet. Let's see that super week next week uh, from AV. All right. Uh, you actually said upstairs while watching the games, this is how you can tell. Uh, that teams are nervous. Yeah, this is what Nervous League of Legends looks like. It's the best League of Legends, right? You know, you're drawing into the pit. You've got all these feathers down. Like, are we bursting? Are we not bursting? Why is my jungler out of the pit? Muru's in the pit. Everyone stop hitting the Baron. The Baron's gone. What are we doing? We're fighting. We're running away. And then, like, in the top lane as well, it was so funny because I I love watching players throw skill shots Mm -hmm. that they don't want to hit. Like, when you blitzcrank, Throws out a hook and there's like a full AP Amumu <laughs> right. there. And he's just like, please <laughs> not be Amumu. <laughs> and like this game, the perfect one was like top lane. They've already taken the inhib. Get back, seize an opportunity. Like Totoro's already preemptively jumped on him and put a shield up. And he just lets the chains fly out. And they sail slightly wide. And I'm like, get back, you're a lucky man. Because if you <laughs> take those chains, Chippy's two hits you. Yeah. Like there's no way you win that fight at this stage of the game against a Camille. But on paper, a, it still looks like you're trying. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So uh, that's when you just know people are nervous because they're going for plays they shouldn't and then the plays aren't hitting. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, that was a net neutral, but could have been bad and, how and do you, shouldn't have happened at all. And how do you calm the, those nerves? Is it just like, you know, uh, by midway through tomorrow, we're going to be... 10 games into Super Week mm-hmm. and there's Gauntlet ahead of us and then the finals. Is it just time? No, nah, I don't think so. I don't think you ever get rid of the nerves. Like, good players, like, bring the guys back to, like, 
a state of normalcy, mm-hmm. which is why I always say it's good to play structured League of Legends, right? Because if you do something and then you reset and then you do another thing, you have the eight seconds of the recall and the 16 seconds of walking out of the base to set, talk about, okay, what are we actually trying to achieve yep. here? Like, what is the game plan? Yep. Are we looking for a fight? Yep. Are we just looking to siege? And then you've got all this time to actually have a structured conversation. When you get hyphy and caught up in the game and yep. when the blinkers turn on, as Bryce says, you're like, I'm going to hit top turret, then I'm going to hit this guy, and now I'm hitting this guy, yeah. and none of my team is here with me, but I'm still hitting this guy, and I'm dead. And you're like, what happened here, guys? And I think like everyone falls into that, so it needs to be a team effort to pull yourself out. The problem isn't nerves in any sport in the world, right? Like yeah. Nerves exist in all of it, but like if you're a swimmer and you're too nervous and you're hyperventilating, you're not going to win, yeah. right? Like There is a line in every sport that you play where too nervous is a thing, mm-hmm. right? So there's also the other side of it where... like. My, my teammate is nervous. Mm. I'm going to have to win harder yeah. for him yeah. Yeah. because he's too nervous. Yeah. And then you do crazy plays that are like just not correct yeah. because you're compensating now. So like that's the thing with team games, right? And the solution is just all be aligned with your goals. Mm-hmm. Just play your goals. Mm-hmm. Like do your job. Don't do like Biopanther said in the interview too much. Yeah. Like he didn't need to win lane, but was winning. And do the little thing. It's so surprising because I get really nervous. Yep. If I go get like, if I'm nervous about casting, mm-hmm. if I like pick out my outfit, make sure it's iron, like go get a haircut yep. and like make sure I like look and feel good, yeah. then I'm less nervous about the four cast because I've done all the little things. Wins. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In my control. I'm like, okay, I've done, like, I'm well prepared. Like I've got everything here. Like if I'm a player, it's like, what am I playing on the weekend coach? Am I practice on that? Yes. Mm-hmm. If not, let's change that. How do I fit into the team? What is my role? Yeah. If I've knocked off all these little wins and I'm like, I'm comfortable. Mm. Then it's like, yeah, sure. Shit goes wrong in the game all the time. You know, teams are going to throw stuff at me that I don't expect. But I've done everything in my power Mm -hmm. to be ready for this, you know, 20 to 40 minutes of League of Legends. And that's all you can ask for. And also, uh, the great teams harness the nerves. They go, yep, Mm -hmm. we're going to take this energy and we're going to direct it in the right direction. Correct. Good. Uh, I have a question. Oh, no, before I get to that, actually, uh, Dire Wolves won first game. Dire Cubs... Won everything last night. Dire Cubs, winners of the OCS. Mm -hmm. Uh, Big congratulations to them. They took down Mammoth Academy. Uh, Bryce was there. I assume it was a banger. He's nodding. He doesn't have his headset on. Double thumbs up. Um, I sent you an email about it, but I don't think you you read it. So that's okay. Um, Was it a good night? Yeah, uh, games are actually really exciting. Yeah? Last one. Mammoth got boomed. Uh, Die Cubs came out with a with a slow grinder, uh, but first couple of games, they were wild. It was good. Carbon was even speechless, I'd say, Bryce, at a certain point. Yeah. If you wanted to watch Game 2's VOD back as the game end, I'm really <laughs> lost for words. Yeah. Oh, it's exciting. <laughs> uh, exciting and rare. Uh, now, uh, I was watching Twitch chat as Game Number 1 was on. Yep. Question. These numbers exist somewhere. We don't have them organized, but we will have them organized next week. Uh, it's Dirge, Lady Dubsy, Fairy 101. They were asking what uh, we reckon the most banned and picked champions this split have been in the OPL. Can you wager a guess? We'll find out the exact numbers next week because I've been told it's just a big spreadsheet that no one's looked at. I mean, Games of Legends would just have it off yeah, the top of my just head. Yeah, be there so on a website. I can find it out if you want. But uh... this is the f- You're supposed to guess first. <laughs> I would say... I don't remember what was picked banned. Yumi is up there. I would say Yumi, 100%. Yeah. Silas? Most banned, actually. Maybe not Silas. Is it most banned or most picked and banned? Uh, Both. Most picked, most banned. Silas. Uh, Because, like, normally you put them two together. Well, you can put them together if you want. Yeah, so I'm going to say most picked, Gragas. Most banned, Yumi. For the whole season? Yeah, everyone plays Gragas. I don't know. Not or Jarvan. Team. Maybe Jarvan. I think Jarvan would be the highest presence yeah. jungle. It'll be some, like, dog champ jungle. <laughs> it's Jarvan, Gragas, or Sedge. Like, it's a dog jam. 100p. I'll go with Jarvan and Silas. There you go. Uh, and then Caitlin says, it worries me that Nick Boy actually reads the chat. I watch everything you guys do. Don't think that I'm not there. I'm always there watching. Uh, speaking of you guys, please send in your Nick bag questions for the rest of the evening. Ask Nickboy at gmail.com. We're going to get into your questions. Uh, I've still got some leftovers, actually, from last week uh, that we can start off with. So if I didn't answer your question last week, don't worry. We will get to it. Uh, let's talk... Well, we might not because your question might be terrible. That is which true. Which actually is more likely if you're sitting here watching this show. I have... Um, I reckon I filter maybe 40%. 40% questions. I feel like that's low. Uh, no, because I no, can get... Actually, you don't have the highest bar. No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, the bar is very low, which is saying something about that 40%. Yeah. Of, like, think about how low that is. That it, it beats out questions like... I mean, I've got a question about a dog fart, and I'd be saving it for you on the couch. 
because I know you love dogs. I don't love dog farts. I no one does. does. I, so, idea, right? Please. Is there a reward for if you get a like question read out on the show? There used to be. Like, we should give them subs or something. I don't know. Someone in production, get on that. We'll figure but it out. But there should also be a punishment if you send a question okay. and it doesn't reach the bar. So Damn. we... Yep. And just ban him. Ban him just on the site. Question sucks, you're just gone. That's good. Yeah. I like that. That's why you're not seeing all those people Twitch chat that you constantly <laughs> talk about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. So we screenshot the bad questions yep. so that we prove that they were sent in. We're not yeah. just handing out willy Like really we should wall of punishments. shame them or something. Like we should print them onto these bricks. That's a very good idea. Wall I of like shame that. is I'm, a good idea. Yep. Yeah. That's going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fine with that. Uh, okay, wall of shame. Maybe a small wall that we could take to MEO. Uh, and put as part of the set. Can you put a wall on a plane? I mean, a small wall is technically just like a book, right? <laughs> like it's just put it off books together. <laughs> you've yeah, got a house, you've got a wall, <laughs> right? Like it's just a very small wall. Um, so, All right, I like it. So there you go. So I think it's going to be fine. So I'll go through it. I'll tell you what. I'll go through some of the bad questions uh, next game, and we can just like. Air some grievances okay. uh, then, and okay. then we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, send your questions, good or bad, to asknickboy at gmail.com. We are getting ready for game number two, Mammoth versus Order. Order, uh, this is also uh, like Direwolves and like AV, you're... Oh, wait, how many games are you playing today? Two or one? We're playing two. You are playing two, so ignore what I just said. Only AV and Direwolves are in your situation. I love Mammoth. You love Mammoth. You're a Mammoth fan. Myself, you were a Direwolves fan yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. This is exciting. Weird world we're in. Uh, I saw the Mammoth Boys today. Yep. Unfortunately, still eyeing off first place. So, not so going to be hiding strats or anything like that. So uh, greedy. Which, you know, would have been would have been preferable as an order fan. But uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, Mammoth are a team that have historically performed very well against Order. I don't think Order's beaten them during a regular season yet. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see. We give it a crack. Look, we're chilling. He, he looks terrified. <laughs> <laughs> that moment he's actually was... away from the computer because he's afraid of something on the screen. He's shaking. I don't want to play League right now. No, he's good. He's hyping himself up. How's his wrist? Uh, uh, his wrist is actually okay. Like, I mean, I don't think it's great. Uh, he's still on limited game time, but I think that we've managed it as well as we could have, and he's in a position where he's playing more League of Legends now than he has for the rest of the split. That's so really good. That, uh, he's, he's on the mend. He is on the mend indeed. Well, we hope that he's feeling good, that Order are feeling good, and that Mammoth are feeling good. There can be only one winner, so someone's going to be feeling really good after game number two. Uh, and two boys feeling really good right now. We've got Pulse, and we've got EGM, and the Mac is champ select. Feeling so good. Bryce, have you ever had an injury while playing? Or anything? <laughs> ever had an injury at all? Uh, <laughs> depends who you speak to, because mm -hmm. Spooks will tell you that my lung actually popped mid Alistar combo whilst <laughs> at Wildcards. <laughs> Which is partially true. Accurate? Uh, he may have exaggerated the mid-alley combo bit, mm -hmm. but it did go kaboom. Wait, can the long actually puff? I well, feel I like mean, that's well, that, that's like a, yeah, well, that's like a... Yeah. It sounds a lot worse than it is. You know high how he was in hospital? It's yeah. called like a spontaneous pneumothorax. I had that. But now I've had it on both lungs. But now I've had it... I've, I'm, I'm actually... I've been like, my lungs are just like reinforced. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've had... Surgery on both? I'm chilling now. My lungs are the strongest in Wait, the Wait, have they put something over them? Are they like... No, no, no. Are what? you no, no, no. augmented? It's, it's gross. Are you like... No, no, no. It's... it's no, like there's Adam nothing Jensen from no, I don't have like metal X? in me, oh. uh, but like they've been That's fixed. way less interesting. You could have yeah. lied right there and be like, yes, I am an augmented human designed yeah. to cast. <laughs> Here to take yeah, your I'm job. So. Um, cool. Well, let's get into game two. Mammoth and Order. And... Uh, Pun not intended, this is uh, quite a tall order to go into Mammoth here today, trying yes. to find a win. Order um, have a very tough run home. Uh, given their situation, they don't actually have any head-to-head -head win over the four teams fighting over those like last right. couple of playoff spots. 0-3 versus Dials, 1-1 one, one currently versus AV, they play them later. Uh, and then 1-2 versus Gravitas, so... It's not, a, it's not an easy one, and then they also face Mammoth, and they also face Chiefs. So uh, in terms of getting over the line, they've got the hardest run, and it has to start with a victory here today versus Mammoth. Yeah, that's um, that's not a sentence you want to hear if you're an order player yep. fan, anyone to do with them. Like, it has to start with a win today against a Mammoth. That being said, Mammoth, I'm not going to say it on a bit of a slide, because um, they're not. Uh, you're just gonna you're gonna chuck it out there. You, just, you mention it, but you won't. Yeah, you won't yeah. say it. I mean, because Mammoth obviously like lost a bunch of games in these last um, two weeks. Like compared to the literal two games they've lost over the entire split, three yeah. of them have happened in those last two weeks or even last week. 
Um, which is, you know, obviously not optimal for a team who was shooting for first place and was definitively first place for a long time, now taken by Chiefs. But uh, they are still very much a formidable team, I would say. It's also, like, it's, it's difficult, because it's difficult to say, like, this team has stagnated because they definitely have not. But when we've seen such different drifts from teams, like, like upward trajectories mm -hmm. and, like, downward trajectories, like, Mammoth have remained pretty consistent throughout the entire split. Yeah, right? Like, in, in the early stages, like, a lot of their games are, like, comeback wins. We yes. had... Who was it on the couch? Was it Ryoma that's just like, yeah, Mammoth never pick a comp that gets outscaled. They always yeah. have, like, the edge if you go down the rabbit hole and play a 50-minute game of League of Legends. And yeah. if you are a team that drafts like that, then sure, like, comeback victories, they always yeah. happen. But, yeah, Jake kind of alluded to it on the couch, saying that they still have their eyes on first place. A single victory for Chiefs locks them in. They're two points ahead and have the head-to-head. -head. So if, if Chiefs get a win later today, then uh, Mammoth can't take it. But if they're eyeing off, like, the first place finish straight by into the grand final, not having to play in the gauntlet, yeah. then... Yeah, this is going to be it. Also important to note that Fudge is playing. Top Boon has had a bunch of game time, but first pick Vladimir uh, is flexible, but the young rookie is on the roster here today. Indeed. Um, definitely does strike me as uh, the triple champion, but we will see in the end. Uh, if this gets locked in, that's all but certain, and it is indeed. So uh, most likely, but of course, can be flexed as Order have picked himself Kiana and Morgana. Yes. Oh, and a Tom Kench. Okay, because this is a thing that happens with Order when they get to the end of every season and need to pull wins together. First of all, Zaya gets banned away. But it's <laughs> like, okay, yep, like that makes sense. But Jake goes back to Enchanters and Meta goes out the window, right? Kiana, depending on who you talk to, is like, okay, if not broken. So blind pick makes sense, but blind Morgana is hard. If you get Nami, Karma, any of the other enchanters with sustain, like that is not a winning matchup. But you can see the the answer is like they, they want the Kate Morgana, they want the push yeah. comp. And I'm so surprised Destiny goes Tom Kench. Like without jungle attention, that lane, whatever it is, just sucks. Mm -hmm. Like straight up is not good. Uh, it hurts to play into. All you have is like one single target CC. Morgana hits the E button and says no, but they're gonna opt in for it anyway. And uh, yeah, maybe looking to play through the other side of the map. Yeah, maybe. Um, we'll see what it will be in the end, because both uh, Ezreal and Ash taken away alongside the Tam Kent. Tristana, a ban actually from Mammoth here, mm -hmm. um, specifically looking towards those solo laners. Yeah. Um, have we seen a single Tristana actually played in the OPL the solo lane? I want to say no. I'm, I'm not sure. Only, only bans. I've seen it in the open. OCS. Uh, yeah. And like differentiating the games in my head is very difficult. Yeah, that's I cast in the same spot, the same studio, almost the same day of the week. So actually, you I, sit I'm not... here, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Other side of the desk, but yeah. I'm still sitting on the desk. Yeah, right. uh, So I, 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 hard to say. I don't think we have. If not, maybe we got a single game out of Chaz. Uh, but if not, like it hasn't yeah. been many. It's been one. It's if too bad, bad we don't have a cast who sits here through every single game. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is. OPL, that, yeah, that's really. Be able to tell us. Yeah, that's that yeah. really sucks actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, Victor lock-in. Anyway, Victor lock-in. No, I'm curious what the AD carry lock-in is going to be. The big one for me, right? Like, what can you pick that will be okay? Jin, okay, that makes sense. I was thinking, like, you can go hard the opposite direction and go, like, Sivir and, like, force jungle attention to get the push and then hold the push, something like that. But Jin is a guy that we haven't seen for a very long time. But Kin, King was a big proponent. And, uh, yeah, that will get locked in. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. Ah, yes. So Ash, and it will be Virus Time Kench. It's going to go uh, the Pokey build. It's going to be Legolas. Mm. And yeah, what do you make of this Victor? Because uh, you know we're very much focusing on the ADCs, mm. but Victor, again, is not a pick that we see yeah. very often. Uh, expecting the Vladimir top, potentially? Actually, no, it could be Vladimir, and then Victor into Aatrox makes sense. The Q, uh, Max, you get the move speed, and you kind of dodge around. And he's a very tally champion. When you've locked in, like, blind pick Kiana, and your AD carry, isn't like a Kaiser or an Ezreal that does mixed damage, uh, realistically. You need AP from somewhere, Tally, big mage top lane player, so makes a lot of sense there. Isn't something we see very often, isn't considered strong in the meta, but uh, certainly is something he's happy to play up there. And Gragas is the final pick. And frankly, Victor, one of those champions where I haven't seen like enough of, forget he exists in Deep Legends. You know? Yeah. Like literally like a hundred and like thirty something champions now and I'm just like, Victor, who the hell Oh, Victor. Yeah, you know? that guy. And I legitimately think the last time I casted Victor was Doinby's Victor, which was Iceborne Gauntlet mid lane, fifty six percent of team damage Victor. 
56 um, percent of yeah. team damage <laughs> with a gauntlet with a gauntlet god that's yeah. gross his team sucks yeah <laughs> this was last year um so yeah um uh, and we're gonna have it probably top lane as we we're saying a, a tally champion uh is actually aatrox going to the top lane so it will be a aatrox victor top lane with kiana and uh vladimir mid and uh, I can see this one getting spicy pretty early, right? Like Vlad, Victor, those guys kind of just want to chill. Junglers probably won't be playing around those lanes specifically, but uh, you take a look at the other matchups, we have junglers that can go for like level two ganks. You think about red buff to lane for a Jarvan, Gragas E-Flash combos when you have volatile lanes like Caitlyn Morgan to a Tom Kench or the Kiana or anything yep. like that. This is one that both of these teams desperately wanting to win despite being at different ends of the standings here. One fighting for first place, one just trying to make it into the postseason, and yeah, necessary for both of them. Going into game, we do not have a coach interview. We have two coach interviews today. We'll have one next game, and then the rest of the six of them will be tomorrow. So, uh, oh, yeah, they're dodging us. They are dodging us, but God damn, we'll it. get them tomorrow. Uh, which I feel like you probably do want the extra time. Um, I don't know. Were you ever interviewed? Were you in an era where you were being interviewed at all as a? as a player slash coach and, and thought like, oh, I, I kind of don't want to do this right now. Like, uh, Well, no, I never, well, especially you speak to coaches whilst the game is happening or before the game sometimes, uh, like never after, right? And yeah, players sure. is always after. So it's like either you win and you're just like, God, I'm just the sickest I'm guy the ever. Best. I'm so good. Yeah. Like, yeah, interview me. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> you see that? That was incredible. Let me flex. It's like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was always fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was always about it. Yeah, you were probably the wrong person to ask about. Yeah, maybe that. Too. Well, I mean, and yeah. now, now I cast Lee Legend, so <laughs> yeah. I was just like, yeah. I literally <laughs> on camera all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, and getting into game. Oh, man. Hex core. It's been a while since I've seen that item. Yeah, it is. And also, uh, I'm absolutely wrong. Lethal Tempo Varus. So, uh, Tempo Varus. Yeah. yeah. I'm expecting it. It's not going to be. So, why would you go this direction over Legolas? Uh, into this. I, I, I'm not too sure. Like in terms of like early trades, like there is damage there, right? Like range advantage is in the hands of Dream and Jake. Like mm -hmm. absolutely, TP's are matched. You can see Destiny has to go defensive. If a binding lands onto the Varus, he just devours the Varus. If a binding lands onto him, then he's just stuck there for seven years. He gets trapped afterwards and has a miserable time. So he has to pay the cleanse. So just taking a look at the summoners and the and the choices early, you can already tell like that. They're, they're like this is not a win for us early, but. Uh, if you get down and dirty, if you get into melee range, then uh, yeah, it could be there. Lethal Tempo proc out damages the fleet. The sustain sure. is there though, so maybe looking to actually take it to them. Yeah, um, I mean, also do have an aggressive jungler in the form of Jarvan, yeah. right? So there's a possibility to move to the bottom lane. <laughs> um, it's just that black shield is going to be a major problem, you yeah. know, and it's not a ton of magic damage to like break the shield early. Um, I imagine two points in shield and like within the three of them do not have enough magic damage to break it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, certainly, right? Uh, I will say, King, uh, I'm happy to call him the best Varus in the OPL, has been for a while. Uh, in terms of, like, just instant engage, stuff like that, he is incredibly good, which is not something uh, you necessarily prize AD carries for a lot, but that was that was it. That was a roughy trade. Bind into a Q, landing onto King, and gets the proc from the trap onto Destiny. Dream just kind of whacking them both, but they do have the job in there if anything uh, goes south very quickly. But that is the respect you have to pay to a Morgana and Kaelin lane. You walk into them, you cop a binding, and then that's going to be at least trap headshot, mm -hmm. if not more, uh, if not a piltover, right? So it's like, you know, you have to stay back unless you're going all in and open up those opportunities few and far between. Jarvan takes Krogs, moves towards uh, Raptors now, wants to say Rapes. Um, and now he's just moving away from bot lane. So yeah. this is, uh, yeah, this is going to be a rough one. Mm -hmm. They do have some reasonable vision down there. Tribush warded, so the Gragas can't get active. And they also have a very nice ward on top of Spooks right now. Is doing his blue buff entirely in vision. Uh, so Babip has that knowledge. Now actually maybe looking to posture. If he lands the EQ without getting cancelled by Body Slam, then 1v1 could go his way. Also just watches him go to Gromp. So despite not having any bot trio, Jarvan just walks down, will get the crab. Kind of against the flow of the game, which is actually super impactful for this bottom lane matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Gragas is, uh, what he's going to do? Maybe he just hops the wall and looks for the crap that's already been taken. That bit will show in the mid lane and uh, probably put two and two together. Yeah, Gragas doesn't even hop yeah. the wall. He's just like, okay, it's gone. Goes back to base for his first back of the game. And John goes crab to crab. Finding mm -hmm. predicted, not going to land. Top matchup we haven't really looked at all that much, but 
seeing how it kind of just plays out. As I'm like, hey, let's look top, Tally just gets <laughs> yeah. owned. Uh, the Q, the move speed I was talking about in champ yep. champion select, like Aatrox and his trading pattern is all just skill shots, right? Like if he can't stick on top of you, if he can't land the Q, one, two, three, and look for that extended one, then uh, it, it is very rough time for him. So Tally wants to be able to like, look for him to trade, hold the Q when it's necessary, get the shield back to be able to tank one and the move speed gets him out of the rest of it. But an interesting toy, uh, choice, more all in damage there actually for the Aatrox. Normally you see like the grasp, the conqueror, but actually just straight up has Electrocute, so any all-in damage, he's just going to bop him. Yeah, I mean, the matchup that you kind of feel confident about if you're taking Electrocute, uh, I mean, Tally is the flip side and goes for Kleptomancy, so it almost feels like both players have a very different understanding mm. of the matchup that they're playing into. Yeah, and uh, a big thing just happened. Spooks goes through mid, ease over the wall at blue buff and gets behind their vision. Fudge. Full combo, forces the flash out from the Aatrox. Uh -huh. is going to feel pretty good about that with especially where the wave is positioned, yeah. so. And that's a sneaky play. Look at the vision Fudge has, right? Like, they had a reasonable amount of mid, uh, amount of mid control. He's warded Tribush and the enemy Golems, and he's like, okay, he pinged the path from Raptors up to topside. It's like, he's probably here, Babip's like, yeah, Gragas doing Raptors, we'll go topside, look out for it, but behind enemy lines, commits to the gank long before it actually happens, and he's able to find it, so in a matchup where like, I'm thinking the Electrocute probably skews it, right? Fudge is looking for any yep. sort of all-in threat, especially once he hits that 6 mark. Blowing that flash is super impactful for Agragas, who didn't have to use the flash of his own. Absolutely. Maybe looking for a repeat gank at some point. In fact, all of those wards have just uh, timed out. In the bottom lane, Jarvan actually just looking for the first dragon of the game. It is a Cloud Dragon, so going to take a little bit more damage from this one than he may like. But uh, has gone for his first back already. Has might probably asking for a bit of bot lane help as well. God may actually not be able to take it completely by his lonesome. And uh, Manfred will get themselves the first dragon of the game order. Uh, still just farming up in this bottom lane, and I will draw it. Well, actually, hit the spooks so we can find something because bot lane is collapsing. Final Binding plans. on. Good save there by Destiny. Spits out King towards Babip. Did he look for this fight though? Turn around, hail of arrows, Whoa. dream blow. And that is a pretty good disengage dodge out the last binding as well. Yeah, get themselves the dragon. King procs the lethal tempo with the tribush. They have a pink ward to fight on, and he just stands and delivers right now. So they're feeling very comfortable right now. Yeah, and the thing I was going to draw attention to is there is not a big CS yep. differential in the bottom lane. In fact, there isn't one, really. Once this minion wave resolves, it will be um, maybe a slight advantage of the dream, but not as much as you would expect. And with Spooks Ooh. coming to the bottom lane, though, King and Destiny, first time they've ever been pushed up in this lane. Flash. Comes in with the E combo. Oh. Out of the binding, misses both, and Destiny should be able to walk this one off. In fact, King even turns around, looks for an hour of his own. And it's not very often you think about Tom Kench and the fancy footwork, but uh, Destiny just holds his flash, cleanses from a slow, and then Fancy feeds his way out of the binding. Jake committed to that one. Flash burnt. And this Caitlyn Morgana lane is, uh, yeah, not got the advantage we were thinking about in the early stages of this one. CS basically even. A lot of that was to do with Mammoth's good control of vision. They weren't scared of Gragas at any yep. point. And a lot of the matchup is like, we can't fight because at the end of the day, the Gragas will be there and we'll lose. In saying that though, Destiny is stuck underneath his turret. King almost there, but four members of order are looking at posture. Yeah, Swiffer coming down. See if he can find this combo. Once again, Destiny with the save. Now chasing him to tower, but isn't able to find a good chance to use the ultimate. At the very least, this will be a multiple plates going over to order in the bottom lane, but Mammoth, um, Actually not responding, it's actually uh, Babbitt taking red yeah. on top side, so this is going to be a good amount of damage down here. Well, that's one of those things, right, where you've committed to the play. Swiffer actually gets in between the two turrets, and at that point, if you're there and you're not willing to pull the trigger on a fight, you don't think you can win it, then it's a long march back to mid lane. Triple's just been CSing, pushing that wave in. He's on Vladimir, so yes, he got a yep. plate, but... No significant turret damage, but the double punish was there. Tally has to pay respects. Jarvan just goes to steal away another red buff, and it really has been the name of the game right now. Where order, they've committed to things already. That was four members down here to look to punish. The early gank was not successful. Spooks goes for the long wraparound topside, and yes, he did get a flash, but then goes bottom lane instead, doesn't look for the repeat, and Mammoth, they have just kind of shrugged all of these things off. Order do have themselves about a about a 300 gold lead now. Most of that is in that CS deny from the Varus position, but yeah, certainly not the uh, bottom lane matchup that we were expecting. Yeah, and still only a wave behind, right? And like when that was four members committing their time to bottom lane and. 
the bottom lane of Mammoth is still in good shape. You know, that's testament to the skill of the bottom lane, of course. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, this is difficult because, as you rightly mentioned, this is a three, four hundred gold difference between the two teams. And often we're at a point like nine minutes, we're like, well, that's a 2k gold lead to the opposite team facing Mammoth. Is it enough, you know? Uh, as now, movement to the mid lane. Jake and Spook's looking for it, but Triple already back at the tower, so mm -hmm. we'll be fine. Two man duo here, support jungle linking up, denying some of that vision control. Pink falls down. You can see immediate response from Babip once again. They want nothing to do with any sort of bot side fight. As soon as Spook shows down there, he's just like, yep, ping, top side jungle, look to take away some of these camps. There was a moment there where the recall was coming out of the bottom lane of Mammoth, and Fudge was like, okay, are we going to map flip the, the classic 10 minute fight over Rift Herald? But. Maybe due to that four-man dive that Auto went for before. Yes, they didn't get a kill, but it did get themselves a bunch of plates, and this turret is realistically uh, in threat of falling down very soon. Yep, down to two plates now. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, so just trading off. Babip actually uh, just spotted there on Ward. A lot of deep vision, actually, from Order in the bottom side jungle here. And still putting that pressure onto bottom lane, Babip will find himself in this bottom lane, we'll see, because uh, Orla still have tabs on him right now as he is pathing towards this tri brush. Throws down the flag, will be swatched out there by Jake. Yeah, didn't want to face check Gragas, binding. It's going to go wide though, Dream looking for it. Dodges all of this, and just showing his face down bottom lane, but this next wave will be probably down to uh, a singular plate left for Mammoth, so they are slowly bleeding out on the bottom side now. And that a little pat on the back that uh, all the gate to the bottom lane is paying off. Mid lane triple. Pretty much doing the same in the mid lane, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, Spook's taking Wolves and see what he goes for next. Actually, a lot of stopwatches uh, on both sides have just not been used. Five yeah. total. What? <laughs> Zero kills? The only gank that we've seen so far has been Spooks. He goes top, gets a flash out, and bottom side gets a cleanse. So, no real fighting happens bar that. Swiftbird just. Straight up solo killed with a wow. by a Vladimir with Seekers a Vladimir with guard. Seekers. Oh, underneath tower. I mean, that must have just been a, a miscalculation on how much damage it could take. Spooks. Oh. Uh, low mana, low health. Just getting wrecked by Ocean Dragon right now. With the bottom lane not reacting as they were looking for that fourth plate. Didn't quite get it. Uh, and that will be Herald taken by Babipon cross map. Yeah. Placed down in top lane. And that is a huge turn of events. Mammoth walk away with every single we'll see. Yeah, how it happens. Just straight up one hit over the creeps. That's a damage calculation if I've ever seen one. Wow. Blue buff transfer complete easily cleans that one up. And you said it when first pick Vladimir was locked in. You're like, yeah, that's a triple champion to me. Yep. That's why. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But I mean, even that's like absurd to me that he was able to do that from, you know, 85% HP. Spooks and Swiffer find themselves in top lane two versus flash. two. Goes for the flash E. Followed through, stun against the wall, flash away, Fudge goes down. And Swiffer gets himself a kill in return. Yeah, sort of a weird play there. The Rift Herald actually bashes into the inner turret, but Order do find themselves uh, with the takedown. Fudge blows his flash, gets slammed against the wall and taken out for that one. I was saying, like, that turn of events, almost specifically by triple, there was going to be a trade. Spooks is like, yeah, I have bot cryo, I can just solo out a dragon, that's fine. We can't really contest on the top side of the map, and Babip is like, yep, absolutely, I'll take the Rift Herald, but mid lane dying skews it pretty heavily. Spooks gets forced off, isn't able to farm anything, doesn't lose the dragon. And for a Kate Morgana lane, which is where Order's pressure has been thrown the entirety of this early game, 12 minutes of rotating down there and looking for kills, they actually lose the first brick race to the top side. This is... It was almost a fight. Almost a fight. Yeah, it's just kind of curious how this early game's gone down. But, you know, sometimes that's where player skill will just sway matchups and sway the tempo of the game, which is definitely what's happened in this case. Uh, and Protobelt actually just fully completed now by the Vladimir. So kill potential through the roof. If he can 85% to zero on a Seeker's Arm Guard, I reckon he could probably 100% to zero as he tries it on Tally in the bottom lane. No magic resist on this one. Triple throws out the last Q, the Sanguine Rush buff right there, but not quite enough damage without the ignite. Actually, the difference in the end, Tiny underneath this tower goes in for round two, That's and we'll it. just finish him off with the drive-by. And Triple's just solo killing everybody on the map right now. One laner down, the other one falls as well, and Tally's itemized strictly for the Aatrox, going towards that gauntlet, just has straight-up armor to deal with there, and uh, 
Yeah, two trades is the piece. Ulti blown on the first one. Second rotation comes through and just cleans him up without the ability to force out the wave or anything. And he's doing so much work for this Mammoth lineup right now. Yep, triple, a uh, bit of a problem now, kind of out of nowhere. And, you know, he trades it himself. You know, this wasn't something that came in from jungle intervention. This was triple just opening up his own advantage, 1-0, and then kills the top laner, 2-0, and zero, um, as well on his way to his second item. So Mammoth kind of explodes back into the game and have taken themselves a 2,000 gold lead mm -hmm. over Order, who, you know, you're expecting naturally to ha kind of have that early game lead. Uh, and that's only culminated in about two waves in their duo lane. Uh, and still didn't manage to take down that tower. You know, that was three plates in the end, but it's still standing in the bottom lane. Yeah. The only tower goes into Mammoth. Because let's think about... Okay, let's not think about anything. <laughs> let's uh, just not think. Swiffer. Okay. okay. Does get himself to safety. Like, thinking about this game plan, right? Like, it's a 2,000 gold difference in 15 minutes. That is significant, but you're taking a look and, like, the conversation does become a little bit about scaling. Order, if they get to, like, super late game, like, Caitlyn is in a good spot. She will deal a bunch of damage. Like, Victor gets there. He's online, but... By nature of the fact that you look at the composition, do you expect them to come out of the gates with a little bit of that gold lead as you're alluding to? The spikes are just going to be there, that little bit too quick for Mammoth, right? Triple's going to be at two, three items earlier than anybody else on the map. Varus has easy buys. He has the bork into what yep. maybe will be like the Gwinsu's and two item spike is massive. So it's not like in this situation, like order is hard, like I am early game. That's all I've got. They can get towards the late stages, but Mammoth from this position should have such a strong handle of the mid game right now. Yeah, it's when like Vladimir's there as your pension plan, but you've just cashed out early. You know, you're still in your 20s and yeah. you're like, all right, let's retire. Like, Triple's in a great situation right now. Um, and also went back, picked up his Phoenix Codex, so he's pretty close to his Zonis at this point. We also just get Solar Gold in the bottom lane, which is also going to help. Next up, 300 yeah. over to him, so um, yeah in a real good situation. Um, and also, speaking of that victor, you know, I was talking about Doinby being the last victor I've seen with the Iceborne, uh, has picked up Iceborne in Turtle Lane in Top Lane. Yeah, I'm curious what the progression of the build is. Probably uh, itemizes much more towards AP as he yep. goes past that one, but it's just like Gauntlet to deal with Aatrox, make the lane okay, and you do have that kind of potential. Mammoth on the other side of the map, gonna pick up a uh, second Dragon of the game. Only in Ocean, only in Air in the bank right now. Ooh. Just on a ward, rooted, goes into stealth, flag drag, but just finished off. And yeah, wrong place, wrong time on top of a ward. Jake chucks out the Q, just managed to find a target, but the rest of all, they just have to Ooh. skedaddle out of Destiny, mid lane. Though. Who's he got with him? It will be Babip. Jake caught out in this mid lane. Oh my god, Vladimir almost finishes him off by himself. Babip just waiting over the Sonyas. Throws out the ultimate cataclysm for the kill. And they get everything. Flash heal and the stopwatch from the Morgana. Cast comes over the wall to try and deal with the wave, but mid turret just deleted anyway. Order throwing multiple members of that one looking for the defense, but not going to be there. And Mammoth extending their gold lead. We're only three minutes away from the Baron buff spawning and uh, a 4,000 gold lead. Most of it being out of Vladimir is absolutely nothing to scoff at. No, not at all. I've picked up an NLR as well. 301. This is a big Vladimir. Top lane is being pushed in by order, and it should be the first tower of the game for them. But in response, that was three. That was all outer turrets now down for Mammoth. And uh, including that mid lane. So goes back after a good payday. And uh, three more finishes come off in the end. But yeah, you're, you're right. But Two minutes now until Baron and Mampa very much set up for success here with that other turret already down in mid lane. Mm -hmm. Certainly is. Swiffer looking for an opportunity. If a squishy member face checks, maybe is like King deploys up here. I can just one hit him off the back end of a cheeky weak side rush, but finds himself a Jarvan and is like, okay. Maybe not. That's a Cinder Hulk and the makings of a Warmox. Uh, that's a no from me, dog. And it's going to retreat back to his jungle. I like what Mammoth just did. Every single member walked out of base with uh, one, if not two, pink wards. So, going to be able to progress their vision uh, pretty quickly here. Order once again, looking to break uh, bot side turret. May just be the second one of the game right now. And Fudge uh, paying his respects. Going to concede it. Yep. Tally in the bottom lane will get himself a tower in return as well. But, uh, yeah, it does look like this would be an inner turret dropping for that privilege. Dream, or, or rather, Jake goes towards the top lane, thinks maybe not in this one versus one, and brings the rest of his team into the mid lane. Swiffer looking for a combo there on Tafut, but he will walk it off. 
Yeah, and it kind of has to be the game plan right now. Like, Mammoth have such, like, if you take a look at, ooh, okay. Black Knock Jack onto Spooks, gets Jake and Spooks in this Cataclysm, forces one flash, and Jake doesn't have his own, turns around, triple good cast, behind. but Triple going for a big flank right here, oh. which just kills Spooks on the spot. Meanwhile, Swiffer. getting the pick onto Jarvan, Destiny will save him, throws out King to safety. Jake finished up by the Hemo Plague, Tally takes them down the Chaos Storm. Swiffer over the wall looking for a target, but it's staying away from any terrain that he can use his ultimate on. In fact, he's already used it. And Fudge getting chased out here, separates from the team. Destiny over the wall, seeing if he can perhaps save him. Juice into the brush. Babip cops a shot right there. Flag drag doesn't get a target. Tally still chasing forwards. This is a very prolonged fight. But Tally oh. just separates from his team and it was to get finished up by all five members right there. Destiny rooted over the wall. Dream loses all of his HP to triple. Flashes away into the piercing shot, and that will be King collecting another, and Swiffer is now on the run. Yeah, one by one by one, every order member is being taken down right now. Triple with the flank, he will have pool available. TP's actually going to get the Varus behind the oh, Kiana wow. right now. Complete oh, wrap around, and there is Sanguine Pool, and Zanith and King will get the kill. And I believe that was four kills? No, that was respawn. five. That was, no, that was uh, five? Yeah, that was all that members. Was straight the, ace. The announcer yeah. doesn't say the ace because they didn't die at the same time. Deaths are staggered. But I would love to take a replay of like the first part of those events, like the dive that happens, because like Swiffer is doing what he has to, right? Take a look, individual mastery. The bait out of Spook, step back on the E, completely outplays the Gragas, and then Swiffer reaches behind the Varus and just gets devoured out of, out of the ulti there, and Destiny triple straight up just denied everything of the engage that ought to have right now, and. Yes, eventually, like, the members are rotating over. Fudge gets caught in, that, in a weird position against Dream and finds himself in a little bit of a three versus one, but they're just kind of baiting them in, like, hook, line, and sinker. Tally doesn't have vision of the members that ultimately just sit in this bush, and the Var uh, the, the Victor game plan, right, is, like, the, the long chase. You get the cues, you get the slows, the chase down, but face check a couple of members, and he falls down. Another death onto Dream. This game is going one way and one way incredibly fast. Pivot to the way from... The Zonyas that went straight into Death Cap. It's Vladimir. That Hema Plague uh, took away about a third of the HP of both Spooks and Swiffer right there. And that was also another pick onto Dream as we came out of replay. Now into this Baron play in order. Kind of feeling they have to go for this one. No flash on the jungle here for Spooks. And Triple just waiting around the corner, dodged out the binding and just tanking up the damage, allowing the rest of his team to focus on the Baron. Swiffer waiting over this wall, does have the ultimate, seeing if he can time it with Spooks right here. Ease in, looking for it's the steal. Low. Goes Stolen. over to Kiana. Swiffer gets this one. We'll see if they can get away with the buff though, because Destiny is chasing after them. Managed to get one in his belly, and Swiffer will juke back towards the rest of the team where Mammoth were triple. Low on HP, and Swiffer once again on the run. Babbitt's is going to see him as he was farming the Risk Guttler. Now walking through this one, pops the Cataclysm, goes into Stealth, triple, chasing down, and will be able to finish him off. I believe that's one Baron now left for order. And we're only two games deep of Super League, right? And Baron is just not a good time for the winning teams. Walk in the pit, Swiffer steals that one away with the Kiana ability there, and uh, you're kind of looking at it, it's getting to 2k, that is normally like the benchmark, hold it at that point, but unfortunately King just whacking away on the big purple worm. Spooks goes over, gets enough damage, and Kiana is able to secure that one. So uh, Mammoth's still in commanding control of this game, but losing a Baron is certainly not a situation they would have wanting to be engineering. Yeah, Baron seems a bit cursed today, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, has not worked out well for anybody. Um, Dowels went for the brute force approach to try it four times, and eventually it will work. Uh, and Mammoth right here. Was it? That's how we're comparing away. teams. Super, super weak, and it's just like, okay, like how many tries does it take to get a Baron? Yeah, That's right. our power ranking at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, zero for one currently in this game. Yep. Um, I mean, still getting a bunch of kills after that one. Uh, yeah. It's going to be very nice. I mean, it's a gold injection now, and when you've got a team with 404 Varus, uh, two and a half items, mid lane, 604. Huge CS numbers as well coming out from the mid lane yeah. and bottom lane. And kind of what uh, I was alluding to earlier has come into fruition. Dream has had like a reasonable game right now, right? Like a, a lot of things have gone wrong in terms of like skirmishes around that, but they were posturing, they got three plates early and he was just doing Caitlyn things, but items are so expensive. Four kills and global gold for King means that he's at two and a half and Caitlyn just now resets while her like in inner turrets are being wailed on for the second item. So he's ultimately like getting towards relevance, but right now order in terms of Sheer combat stats, 7,000 gold deficit is not a good time. Dream 
Flag drag onto Dream, has the Black Shield now as Jake rotates into the mid lane. Destiny saving King once again. Another Flag big. drag into Big Cataclysm onto four players. But can't get in though, but Triple oh. definitely can. Gets one kill, looking towards Spooks now. Tally moving towards his tower. Swiffer jumping in. Can he get the cleanup kills? Triple turns around, gets all of his HP back. Finally put down by Swiffer. 1,000 gold bounty. And that will be a two for two in mid lane tower for Mammoth. Yeah, somehow the tower goes down, but it isn't just a two for two trade. They end up uh, in an okay position right now. Order, much like AV in game number one, hanging on to dear life. We will take another look. King is going to start this one off again. Spooks with a very nice cast and nice. A bit of that damage, but Dream got the net, got the trap, and so much damage off the back end. But this is really the turning point, right? Yes, Jarvan dies, so his Cataclysm is kind of denying access for the Vladimir for the Aatrox at that point, but not like a three, four-man Hemo plague in the Cataclysm is always going to be a good time. Triple loses his life, but you can see the makings of the Dream, right? If Mammoth land all their buttons yep. in quick succession, that is, uh, that's an extreme amount of damage. The Wombo Combo. Yeah, order. Just trying to uh, grasp onto life, as you put it. 7,000 gold lead still for Mammoth. Uh, now pretty much only looking at bottom lane <laughs> inner. <laughs> yeah, that's... Triple has 4k. That's some gold. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, big Vladimir. And yeah, he was... I said it before, but I'll say it again. You know, Triple opened up this advantage for himself. He got himself rolling yeah. in the mid lane. Um, yeah, with Babip at the same time, seeing how well mid was going, got Herald that overflowed into top lane. That tower went down and just kind of sped up the rest of the map. And, uh, now Order, having to defend. And if my memory serves me correct, I think the first mid Kiana game we saw was Legacy versus Mammoth. And we interviewed Fantix. And we're yeah, like, right. okay, like Kiana mid, what do you think? Like everybody's saying this champion is busted from solo queue does so much. And he's like, yeah, I think she's good. But like, if you don't give her the wing cons, like you can play around it and it's fine. And this is that game, right? Yeah. This is like mid Kiana. They just pick Vladimir. Triple's played this so many times. One of his most played in the OPL history. And he's just like, yeah, okay. And then he solo kills it. It's not even like, yeah, okay, I'll do nothing for 10 minutes. It's eight minutes. Hit you in the head with a full combo. It cleans you up and uh, is steamrolling the game from this point onwards. Yeah. Heck of a pull back. Uh, Tani making his way back to the tower. Has the black shield on top of him. Triple goes into the same green pool, even with the... Gravity well there, we'll just walk it off. And uh, that was pretty simple. Now comes the, uh, I'm not going to say hard part, but harder part here for Mammoth, trying to knock down these inhibitor towers. May yeah. require another Baron. Mm -hmm. I said the B word. Let me, uh, one minute to go. Yeah, one minute away from that one. I'm just going to face check Swiffer. Yeah, Swiffer does get the pick right here. That's going to be Tam Kench coming up though, with his team in tow. Swiffer low, Jake backing away. He's about to drop flag track from Babim. He's going to finish off the support and Spooks. Getting caught out, Swiffer make his way back to Tally. Dream now caught in the Cataclysm. Dragon Strike comes through, and here comes Destiny and King stepping up to the plate. Will get themselves a kill. Tally one in return onto the jungler, but now he's caught by Triple rotating from the mid lane. And Swiffer, the last remaining member, chased out here by Fudge, turns around, <laughs> just getting with the Q. But with four kills to two, this actually might just be game. Yeah, you just said the B word, but Mammoth absolutely don't need it. They bait order into their own jungle. Destiny there with a the response and punish them in the team fight. One member alive for the next 15 seconds. Two inhibs on the cards right now. Mammoth just going to crack open the order base and leave them with next to nothing. Yeah, minimum two inhibitors, maximum the game. But with death time is still being relatively low at 27 minutes, we're going to have respawns coming in from order yeah. now, chasing down Mammoth. You can see, pings into the tribe, which they want the TP flank from Dream. He's done it before in the vein. Caitlyn, different champion, but King is just stepping forwards. Yeah, they turn onto Swiffer, and now he is a dead man walking with the Hema Plague on top of him. He has to go in. And Mammoth will get the pick onto the mid laner, who had ultimate ready to go. It looked good from order. Take down they these three members, it. but effectively, this is a three versus five that Mammoth are winning right now as Fudge joins the party. A four versus four, a true four versus four. As Tally turns onto triple, goes into the Sanguine Pool. Flag He's drag, dead. Babbit rejoins the fight. Dream is dead. Jake duking up right here. Spook tosses out the ultimate. King with the wide flank. Cataclysm comes down, and it's all just damage in the pit. Massive Q comes through from the Aatrox. Dual kill, triple kill for Fudge. And you can see the desperation. Order, look at the map, and it's like, we have to win now if we have a chance. But Mammoth stands strong, deliver the team fight, and just wipe them off the rip. 23 kills to five in this game, and Mammoth just hold on through the early game. 
and come out with the biggest counter punch and will take down order in the second game of Super Week. Cheeky dive of the fountain. Destiny devours Babip out of that one. And uh, yeah, certainly a statement game coming into this one, right? Order uh, trying to make a run for playoffs. Mammoth trying to make a run for their first place. So they uh, keep their dreams alive here with that victory. And not even just that, it's form going into playoffs. This yep. is a team that you were like, I don't want to say they're in a bit of a slide right now, but they haven't looked like top tier Mammoth at the uh, early stages of the season. That was, a, that was a very dominant victory and a bit of a weird game, right? Coming out of the draft, yeah. it's like, okay, Tom Kench, Varus into the Cape Morgana. They throw the gauntlet they're willing to match and it looks the goods. Yeah, and it was also, you know, we were talking about like, are you going to go lethality? Are you going to go like range yeah. as Q build? No, uh, goes for on hit mm -hmm. um, and able to weather the storm early game, right? Like they clearly had a plan in mind and they executed on it fine. You know, there's yeah. no problem. Uh, bot lane was fine, mid lane gets an advantage by itself and that just overflows into other lanes, that snowballs out of control yeah. and it was just a, yeah, a Vladimir, a Vladimir show uh, case. Yeah, end, and, yeah. And, and it's like what led to that, right? I think it was really like a very cohesive effort from Mammoth. Like mm -hmm. bottom lane picks like a matchup that they can brawl early, but Vlad gets prior early enough and works with Babip to get vision on Spooks doing his blue buff. Mm -hmm. That means that Babip actually, in this sort of matchup, where there's a Kiana mid into the Vladimir, he gets double scuttle crabs without bot priority. And from that point, like, triple has freedom. You think yeah. about, like, volatile mid matchups. Like, people want to see the jungler so that I can go for the fight. Because, like, if I'm just trading one for one, blowing all my buttons underneath their turret, that is just not a good time. And and Mammoth gave him that freedom in the matchup where you're looking at it. Like, surely Kiana should be the one with kill threat. Yeah. It just, like, literally just one taps the Kiana. Yeah, I know. For goes 85% as well. It was crazy. Like, hits Tally underneath the turret, two rotations, and then Vladimir was just unstoppable. Yeah, and it's like, when you see a Vladimir like that, it's like the Vladimir from your Solo Q Nightmares. And yeah. It's just like, I can't start him. There's mm. literally nothing I can do into this. But yeah, it just makes it look so easy mm -hmm. in that game. Mammoth coming out of win here today. It looks very good over order. And yeah, that kind of uh, keeps the middle of the pack very interesting. For now, mm. though, we are going to send it over to Nick Boy with a player interview. Unstoppable indeed. You're a monster. You're a bad man. Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking uh, on the couch earlier about nerves heading into Super Week and that it was kind of on display for game number one. Didn't seem like there were many nerves for Mammoth there for game two. Well, I actually, I don't know. I felt a lot of adrenaline this game because yeah. like, we have nothing to lose, obviously, because we're, like, we're sort of locked in second. Mm -hmm. So Super Week doesn't matter as much, but... I know order seasons on the line, and they ended our season last last split. So it's good to get revenge, you know. This is personal now. Oh, not against the players, but you know, against against, against the, brand. the team, against the yeah, brand. Yeah, 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 like screw the brand. Yeah, for the sure. The players are all very for nice. sure. <laughs> um, uh, well, you certainly did it. Uh, that was a shellacking, mm. uh, I believe, is the technical term. Uh, how was that game for you? Like the adrenaline aside, yeah. I suppose it's everything you were looking for. Um, yeah, it was really clean. Um. Bot respect them when they had to. Like, they had a clear plan of early game, this game. Mm -hmm. And I think we played around that really well. Uh, I'm really proud of my bot lane for respecting the early roam. And you've got, I mean, really, it's just Chiefs ahead of you, in, unless something terrible happens uh, over the next weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. How are you feeling about a MEO grand final? Are you ready for the big stage? Um... Well, I actually won there last year, so... Of course, course you did. Of course I'm ready. Of course, course, you, yeah. of course you, you won there last year, you were fine. Yeah. So, so is Mammoth ready? Yes, and Mammoth is ready too. Yeah? Because four of our five players played there last year. There you go. So. Well, this interview's over, because I just yeah. can't remember a single thing from last year. Cut <laughs> it. got with him, it will be Babip. Jake caught out in this mid lane. Oh my God, Vladimir almost finishes him off by himself. Babip just waiting over the Sonyas. Throws out the ultimate cataclysm for the kill. And Plague um, took away about a third of the HP of both Spooks and Swiffer right there. 
that was also another pick onto Dream as we came out of replay. Now into this Baron play in order. Kind of feeling they have to go for this one. No flash on the jungle here for Spooks. And Triple just waiting around the corner, dodging out the binding and just tanking up the damage, allowing the rest of his team to focus on the Baron. Swiffer waiting over this wall, does have the ultimate, seeing if he can time it with Spooks right here. He's in, looking for it's the steal. Low. Goes so low. over to Kiana. Swiffer gets this one. We'll see if they can get away with the buff though, because Destiny is chasing after them. That 7,000 gold deficit is not a good time for Dream. Black Drag onto Dream, has the Black Shield now as Jake rotates into the mid lane. Destiny saving King once again. Another Black Drag to Big Cataclysm onto four players. But can't get in though, but Triple oh. definitely can. Gets one kill, looking towards Spooks now. Tally moving towards his tower. Swiffer jumping in. Can he get the cleanup kills? Triple turns around, gets all of his HP back. Finally put down. One minute away from that one. Hutch is going to face check Swiffer. Oh, Swiffer does get the pick right here. There's going to be Tam Kench coming up though. With his team in tow. Swiffer low. Jake backing away. He's about to drop. Flag drag from Babin. He's going to finish off the support. And Spooks getting caught out. Swiffer making his way back to Tally. Dream now caught in the Cataclysm. Dragon Strike comes through, and here comes Destiny and King stepping up to the plate. Will get themselves a kill. Tani want to return onto the jungler, but now he's caught by Triple rotating from the mid lane. And Swiffer, the last remaining member, chased out here by Fudge, turns around, <laughs> does get in with the Q. Winning right now as Fudge joins the party, a four versus four, a true four versus four. As Tani turns onto Triple, goes into the Sanguine Pool, flank drag, Babbit rejoins the fight, Dream is dead. Jake juking up right here, Spook tosses out the ultimate King with the wide flank. Cataclysm comes down, and it's all just damage in the pit. Massive Q comes through from the Aatrox. Dual kill, triple kill for Fudge. Just hold on through the early game and come out with the biggest counter punch and we'll take down order in the second.